Good morning, all. Good morning. Uh, as you can see, I have some notes here. Uh, please know I'll be faking it. I just had cataract surgery. These are my old glasses. The new ones aren't ready yet. So I, I really can't see what's written here. But I'm going to pretend anyhow. It is a great pleasure to be here and to talk about something about which I have great passion, uh, particularly in terms of weight management and physical activity as regards to, to uh, cancer treatment. Uh, lest I lose any of you in the few minutes that I have, let me begin with my conclusion. And my conclusion is that weight management and physical activity are essential components of the treatment of cancer patients and can be, should be, and must be integrated into the, and monitored throughout treatment to help achieve the most beneficial treatment outcomes. That's it, period. Now, how did I come to where I am today? As has been indicated, I was diagnosed 14 plus years ago with metastatic prostate cancer. It had blocked my uh, bladder. It had metastasized to the hip or the right ilium, so it's in my bone. We can't take it out. Uh, there it is. Uh, I was taking care of my wife who was recovering from breast cancer when I got my diagnosis. Uh, we got a diagnosis from our son that he had polymyositis, lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis. We watched the astronauts come down and blow up, and we said, what the? It's going on here. And we decided, hey, let's make the most out of life that we can. I looked at my wife. She's not a cancer survivor. I looked at myself. I'm not a cancer survivor. We're all survivors. This is Monday. How many of you survived Sunday? <laughs> we all did. And so there's got to be more than just surviving. Surviving is a state of the body. Thriving is a state of the mind and of the heart. And so we decided that what we were going to do was thrive. Sold our house in three days, moved to North Carolina where we don't know, didn't know anybody, and started over again. I've been through what I call, and my, my oncologist, uh, we call prostate cancer chest. Can't hear me. Prostate cancer chest. That is, it makes a move, we make a move. I've been through Lupron, Casodex, Ketoconazole three times. Docetaxel, Provenge, Zytiga, Xtandi, Zofigo. I'd be back on the, uh, on the uh, Abiraterone Zytiga again, except they want $2,600 a month, and that, that's not going to happen. The point is that I realized in many of my, uh, throughout my treatments, I was beginning to be affected by my weight gain, my muscle loss, my strength loss, and it wasn't being dealt with. I was 255 pounds. I'd never been that heavy in my life. I show you here my jumbo suit. <laughs> Don't worry, I have one suspenders. The point is I'm now 60 pounds lighter. And it was because I got busy trying to do something. I said, I'm gonna die of a stroke or, or a heart attack. It's not the cancer that's gonna kill me. It's going to be something else. So I started looking around, and I hit a real low point. And that low point was that when I looked for resources in the clinic where I'm treated, I couldn't find a body of knowledge and support and services that was all integrated and available to me. I had to piece it together. I had to overcome some misperceptions about men and prostate cancer among people I thought should know better. Uh, I had to go to the various locations where services were provided and start piecing things together for myself. And this was many years into my treatment. And I was, my, you know, lost so much strength and muscle that my body was saying, hey, my skeleton was saying, hey, my joints were saying, hey, you used to have muscle to support all this fat. Now you don't. So I'm going to make you hurt. So I was in pain all the time, lugging all this stuff around. So I decided to do something about it. Couldn't find the things that I needed to kind of integrate them into uh, an overall kind of treatment, 
excuse me, treatment activity. Uh, and so that was a real low point for me. But somewhere along the way, as I spoke, somebody heard me and through various serendipities, I was connected to a exercise physiologist. And this person was hundred miles, hundreds of miles away from where I live. And we had a brief telephone conversation and then we began Skype sessions. And she brought me from being so weak, coming off of docetaxel, where I would go to the mailbox and on my way back to the house, I'd sit down and rest to the point now where I can do a robust workout. And I will challenge you if you don't <laughs> think I can. The point is that I've never met her face to face. We did it all through Skype. She would give me a workout that included a warm up, cardio, strength, and a cool down. And she says, five minutes, she says, do what you can do. She met me where I was. She addressed me personally in terms of my, my needs. Every time I tried to squirm out of something, she'd just come around the other way. So, well, you know, I got bone on bone in my right knee. And she says, yeah, that's good. But while you're, while you're journaling your exercises, you can ice your knee. She wouldn't let me go, and she brought me to a point where exercise now is, it's not exercise, it's physical activity. And there's no limit to what I can do. I brought a little packet with me. Uh, we drove up yesterday from North Carolina, and I have rubber bands, and I can do things. I sit in the airport uh, while I'm in between flights, and I take my suitcase, and I'm doing things, and I can work my entire body. It's a mindset. It's not a program. And this is really important. I, when I speak to researchers, I want to sometimes grab them and shake them because they want to look at the gaps in the research and say, well, that's where we need, we need to start and we'll design an intervention and then we'll find patients to fit into it. And I'm saying, hey, 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 hey look, what you have is right, in, what you need is right in front of you. Patients, use them to frame what research you need to do. You look at people, you know they're going to gain weight. You know they're going to lose muscle. From the very beginning, integrate that into treatment so that we can minimize these negative impacts, that we can maximize the opportunities to keep the body as healthy as possible. My oncologist tells me, he says, I believe that your exercise and the other things that you are doing are as beneficial to you as the medicines I prescribe. So from my standpoint, and I'm going to end at this point, is simply to say, if we understand that we are human systems, we are not just a disease to be treated, but we are a whole system. We are systemic. That if we do something over here, it's going to affect us over there. Why not address those things from the very beginning? In particular, weight management, physical activity, because they keep other parts of our system functioning well. This is not rocket science. This is can you throw a rock. We can do this. We should do this. And we must do this.